Good morning, and welcome to Tangie's tidbit on the syllabus. On the syllabus. I know it's important to say that. Tangie's tidbit on the uh, on the grading rubric. And these students are concerned about how their speeches will be graded. What kind of feedback are they going to get, and how can they tell what it is they need to work on? Well, I use a rather detailed rubric to assist me in giving you that type of feedback. This rubric is actually broken down into eight categories. It won't be easy for you to see them at first, uh, but we have four categories that address content and four categories that address delivery. When you zoomed in, it looked great. Okay. Now, the categories that address uh, content include introduction, organization, information, and conclusion. So I look at how you start your speech, how you wrap up your speech, what type of information you include in that speech, and I look at how you organize that information. On the back side, the, there are four categories, as I stated, related to delivery, and they include voice, because the quality of your voice is very important to the, the delivery of your message. I look at your bodily actions, such as gesturing, facial expressions, posture, and movement. I look at how you use visual aids, the, the quality of the visual, how relevant it is and how you handle it. And I look at your eye contact because people simply don't pay attention or receive messages well from people who don't look at them. Now at the bottom of the back, I have some additional categories for you. I use these more at some, during some speeches than during others. Uh, and these are comments that address the dimensions of the message. I give comments on the verbal content, which is your primary message, the secondary message, which includes unintended communications that often are, get, um, get uh, included in the message, and then I give you feedback on auxiliary factors, which is the third, third dimension, and it includes things, aspects of the message or inclusions that were purposely uh, put into the message for, uh, for its enhancement. Then at the very bottom, you'll find a scoring uh, cue for debate, but that is only used during de debate. Now, at first glance, this rubric can seem overwhelming. What I'm trying to determine is if I need to shrink this down or move it so when I move back in front of it so you can tell me what's happening on the camera. Yeah, um, it, it actually could be a little bit larger if you want to touch on certain points. Not just yet. Okay. okay. At first, I want to... You look I, great, though. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. At first glance, this rubric can seem intimidating, but I don't want you to see it as that. It is designed in, in the manner that it is to allow me to give you the kind of custom feedback you need to determine what it is you individually you need to work on. So now let's look at introduction. Let's look at the introduction. Let's say that I have two students that give a speech and they both receive a 10 for their introduction. Now one student may have received a 10 because they lost a point for not having an attention getter and they lost a point because they didn't relate the topic to their audience. And the other person maybe that received a 10 did both of those things but we didn't hear them connect the topic to themselves okay. or, uh, and their purpose statement wasn't particularly clear. You can see how I need to give each of those individual, uh, individuals something that's clearer and easier uh, for them so that they know what to work on. And that's the beauty of this rubric. It works me a little bit, but it's not to be a burden on you. If you can see it in that manner, then the rubric will serve you well and help you know what to work on as you progress uh, through this class. Thank you.